and welcome to a VSA Capital video. I'm Oli O'Donnell and I'm delighted to welcome back Tom Lamb, CEO of Myriad Uranium, which is on the CSE. Tom, thanks for joining us. How are things? Yeah, good. Thanks, Oli. Yeah. Exciting times in uh, the uranium space still and Myriad is doing great. So um, everything is good. Great. Um, well, I was hoping to focus on the recent update that you announced in March. And sure. now that it's out there and you've worked had a bit of time to work through the data set, what that means for 2024. Um, so you, you announced a few weeks ago that Anaconda uh, Uranium, who'd worked on the property in the 90s, um, you'd unearthed a data set from, from them. Um, they're not the only group to have worked on this, Union Pacific, uh, Neutron Energy, Encore Energy. Yep. Uh, all of these groups have, have worked the property um, but you're the first group to combine everything together. So how significant is this data set and, and what does it mean for you? Okay, so that is, this is the project that we have. Is uh, It's had about 117 million Canadian spent on it in today's dollars. And that was up until about 1982. And that's including some, a little bit of follow-up work. Oh, so these are some of the, Companies, Anaconda, Neutron, Strathmore, etc., that have held our ground over the over the years, but not for a long, long time. Not since 1982 has one group held it all. Um, Strathmore and Neutron each held half of our central key zone of our license area. So this is an important background. But one thing that happened is that Anaconda in 1996-97 is they held and they explored a central area that was going to be the center, the high-grade center of a pit uh, that Union Pacific was going to mine. So our news release is about the drilling that Union Pacific did in that high-grade area of the central pit that Anaconda actually uh, analyzed in the 1990s, 1996, 97. Anaconda went in and they they analyzed 82 boreholes drilled by Union Pacific and analyzed them in detail. And it's a what they called a high grade zone or an area of special interest. And this this is information data that we discovered in our proprietary data packages that we've obtained over the last six months and extremely exciting. So um, it revealed that this high-grade area contains uh, uranium up to 0.385%, uh, or at least those are the, the intercepts go up to that. Uh, a fair number of intercepts uh, above 2,000 ppm or 0.2%, and a lot, 50 plus out of 82 boreholes, 50 plus intercepts, over a thousand ppm. This, this, this is high grade for Wyoming and uh, very exciting for us. Next question really was to put Wyoming in the context globally and regionally um, of where Copper Mountain and this new data indicates that it sits. Obviously you've got extremely high grades in sort of eight, 10% in Athabasca um, and Wyoming is very much uh, a, a ppm region, yeah. although it is uh, the United States' largest domestic producer of uranium. Um, so why is Wyoming able to produce at, at so much lower grades and where does Copper Mountain sit in, 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 the, in the scale in the region? So uh, Union Pacific estimated that we have resources, uh, this is for purposes of their mine planning in 1979, between 15 and 30 million pounds. And the grades are in the hundreds of PPM, as you mentioned. And um, they estimated the potential of two out of the six plus deposits at Copper Mountain of up, upwards of 63.8 million pounds. Uh, that's a lot of uranium for Wyoming. Wyoming uh, produces about two thirds of very small current US production. Um, but as you mentioned, Wyoming is the center of U.S. uranium production, the, and the United States is repatriating uranium production from around the world. The United States 
uses about 50 million pounds a year of uranium and produces only 165,000. So Athabasca, yes, high grade, fantastic source of uranium, upwards in the you know, 5, 10, 15 percent uranium in the ground, but very remote, it's deep, you have to do, you have to treat the uh, host rock, but cool it, uh, freeze it, uh, use robots, etc. And mine development is a 10, 15, 20 year proposition. Wyoming has the uranium readily available. A lot of the projects are roll front sandstone in situ recovery projects. And you get, you know, the uranium is there. You get to have to get the chemistry right and you can just start mining and you can mine very profitably. As uh, the other companies around UR Energy, um, Peninsula are, are ramping up now and others are, you know, it's, this is the, Wyoming's the center, U.S. government, bipartisan basis wants to repatriate production to the United States. It's happening. It's happening in Wyoming. So that's why the Wyoming is so relevant. It's the place in the United States. So yes, Athabasca is high grade, but you can leave the rest of the world aside. It's production's coming to the United States and investments flowing into Wyoming. Our grades have been in the hundreds of PPM, 300, 400, 500 PPM in the historical resource estimates. But now, if we can focus on this high-grade zone and, and approach this differently than Union Pacific was able to do, uh, we, could, we can potentially really up the grades uh, drastically, which is, which is exciting. And uh, so that's the significance of this analysis of the, of the Athabasca's uh, analysis, sorry, Anaconda's analysis and our analysis of Anaconda's work. Um, I'll, I'll expand on that. but. Uh, that's a bit of... Uh, mm. and, and you mentioned uh, in-situ recovery there. Um, your team thinks that, well, firstly, the Copper Mountain is a roll front mineralization, so it would potentially be amenable. The, it, it, it's not actually. I mean, it's a combination of all sorts of things. We have uranium on boulders. We have fractured granite with high-grade uranium running through the structures. Uh, there is sandstone also. Um, so it's it's more complex than a than a than a sandstone roll front project. Um, pros and cons to that: it doesn't immediately jump out that this, okay, this is going to be in situ uh, amenable. There there was some optimism, cautiously optimistic in the 1970s. Union Pacific was. We also are cautiously optimistic about in situ uh, recovery, but Union Pacific in the 70s was going to mine this conventionally in an open pit style, even though they were thinking about in situ, um, because the, our mineralization starts very at the surface or near the surface, and uh, you can mine it conventionally and separate it very easily, and, and uh, on a leach pad you can leach it and get recoveries 90 to 95%, we think around 94%. So, uh, and so we're currently cautiously optimistic about in situ recovery too, but it's not going to be straightforward uh, in, you know, sandstone, roll front sandstone type. Okay. Um, well, this new data set has probably moved you further along the um, exploration curve than where you thought you were in uh, earlier at the start of this year. Um, so what, is, what does it mean for your work programs for the year ahead um, and, and your objectives for 2024? Well, okay, we're in the middle of doing a few things. First, um, expanding our, our land position at Copper Mountain. We have the six plus deposits that Union Pacific identified in our 3,000 plus acres, now growing fast, and lots of prospects. So uh, the second I mentioned, we have uh, historical resource estimates from Union Pacific, um, 15 to 30 million pounds with potential up to 63.8 and beyond. Um, and uh, we, our, our work is expanding our uh, area, our acreage, and confirming over the, you know, going to work, make, create a plan to confirm those historical resource estimates. Those are priorities. Now, the third thing is unlocked and has been unlocked by this Anaconda data that we uh, released a couple weeks ago, and that is that the high grade seems to run down these vertical structures and Union Pacific only drilled to 500 feet generally, maybe up to 600 feet 
in some cases. But these structures keep going, so these dr the drilling terminated in in this high in some cases in the high grade in the faults. And so th this new data tells us that we, if we keep going down deeper, the high grade might continue down the down these faults. We're confident that it that it does would it only makes sense. So three things: expand our acreage, confirm our histo the historical resource estimates we have, and and the uh, and then look at the high grade that may be, look for the high grade that may be deeper. This data enables all three of these things because the, the data tells us about these other areas that we're adding because we can see the faults, we can see the structures. Um, we have, we, they were mapped very thoroughly historically. Um, it's going to help us confirm, understanding this Anaconda data will help us confirm the historic resource estimates. And it's going to help us, we hope, we have some confidence, really bring up the, the grade and, and thereby the volumes of, um, of, the, of the resource. Excellent. Um, and, and beyond that, um, the data sets aren't exhaustive across the, the license area. There are still targets beyond um, what you're planning to reconfirm and build out from uh, the original data sets that you can look to target as well. Absolutely. We, you know, we're adding, uh, we have this great, what we believe is proprietary data set, and Union Pacific identified um, big areas where they did some drilling and they were not able to follow up because they ran out of time, where they believe millions of pounds of uranium, uh, you know, remains to be confirmed, found and confirmed, or they found uranium, but they, they've guessed at uh, how much additional uranium there is there. So we... We're going to add these areas. These are exciting prospects. We've announced one of them already called the Knob Prospect, Union Pacific. Uh, you know, based on their work, thought 500,000 pounds at 0.15 and with big potential to expand. And we have a lot more of those coming. Uh, some with even, you know, one thing I can talk about uh, because it's, it's out there publicly, it's in our deck and I've mentioned it, is right next to our project area is a, is a mine called the Bonan historic uranium mine called the Bonanza mine and it produced according to the data 30,000 30, tons at 1.3 percent uranium and that is 100 yards from our current property boundary I can speak about it because it's in it's in the documents and the powerpoints etc we've you know all this is all this is coming that's a very high grade that's near surface and we have several prospects like that that we're adding. So there are lots of good things to come. Excellent. Um, and clearly you've made a huge amount of progress in, in Wyoming and, and lots to come. In Niger we had a, um, an update from the new military government saying they wanted to cut ties with uh, the US. Have you got any comments on, on, on that and on your, your project in country? So uh, we're optimistic and hopeful. Um, we're, we're following Global Atomic and GoVX's lead on this. They have very good information and good, good relationships with the government, the new government. Um, uh, you know, I, it may be that there are negotiations going on in the in the background between uh, the, the the new Niger government and the and the Americans. Could be some negotiating um, tactics happening. Uh, so let's see. Uh, but we're optimistic about Niger long term. It's got, uh, uh, as far as we can tell, the government is very sincere about uh, developing the uranium sector in a, in a, you know, for the benefit of the Nigerians and um, and uh, you know, creating a healthy sector there. And they're just getting themselves organized. So we're we're actually quite optimistic, but we are taking a wait and see approach. So we're paused while we see how things uh, develop. Good. Um, Tom, that seems like a good place to finish, but any final comments um, before we do? Yeah, our data set is revealing gem after exciting gem, and uh, there's more to come uh, for Copper Mountain. It's, uh, it's one of the very few projects in Wyoming that I think is much closer to production than uh, people realize. Uh, we have higher grade than people realize it's it's there it's uh it's a very interesting project it's going to be an exciting summer and uh
please everybody uh, put us on your ticker and, and get our news even if you don't invest I think you're going to see that this is a really interesting project um, it's also has the potential to be one of the very biggest projects in Wyoming uh, as uh, you know people see that too very soon great Tom thanks very much indeed thanks a lot Ollie